welcome to another video. In today's tutorial we will learn how to make this really cute top. This can be made from sizes from Premi all the way up to large adult. I have only used one ball of yarn for this project but if you wanted to make this into a dress you could easily make the dress section longer. This is going to fit about a one year old if you follow the pattern but I do have instructions from anywhere from Premi up to a large adult. I would rate this pattern as a easy plus. Stitches used are chain, slip stitch, single crochet and double crochet so there isn't anything too adventurous but put them all together and you have this really sweet top. There is a free ridden pattern located on my website and the link for that will be in the description box below. If you'd like to see more video tutorials please subscribe. Also tag me on Instagram and share your creations on Facebook. I would love to see what you are up to. So let's get started on the lesson. For our supplies we're going to need a stitch marker. A locking stitch marker will be very handy but if you just have a piece of yarn that is going to work perfectly fine. This is optional but I do recommend it. Yarn needle with a large eye for sewing in our ends. A tape measure. A pair of scissors and a crochet hook. I will talk about the yarn in a moment. The crochet hook I'm going to be using today is a 3.5 millimeter. I do have very loose tension so normally with an eight ply yarn which is a double knit or a number three yarn in America I would use a four millimeter or a G size crochet hook. Because I have loose tension I just do one size smaller. These are clover crochet hooks. I love these clover clover crochet hooks. If you'd like to grab some for yourself there is an affiliate link in the description box of this video. If you make a purchase via that link I get a little commission at no extra cost to you and it helps to keep my video tutorials and ribbon patterns free. If you're going to be using a worsted weight yarn or a 10 ply or about an Aran weight in the UK you are going to need a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook which is a eye size crochet hook I'm pretty sure. So it'll work in either weight yarn. It'll even work in a four ply which is a number two weight yarn in America, a four ply in Australia or a fingering weight yarn. It will work in that as well. You will need to adjust the pattern. So the yarn I'm using today is so so pretty. It's on a cream base. It has these beautiful colors through it. This yarn that we're using is from Fiber Lily and the one we're going to be using is the Grace Harmony DK. It's approximately 100 grams and that's about 3.5 ounces. This is 100% superwash merino and it is a 224 meter ball. I do have a second one of these but I'm not sure if I'm going to need it. If I do need it I'm going to put the yarn across the amount of yarn that I use across the screen. It is lovely, it's so squishy. Everybody is going to need different amounts of yarn depending on what size you want to make. This can be made anywhere from Premi up to adult size and all the instructions are going to be in the written pattern but I'm going to show you the basics on how to follow the pattern in this video tutorial. I will be making the one year old size in a DK weight yarn. If you make the same size that I do in the video tutorial with a worsted weight yarn it is going to come out one size larger so it will probably fit about a three year old I would say that's a guess but what you need to do and if you followed any of my cardigan or sweater or jumper tutorials that I've had in the last year and a half to two years you already know how to measure to make your project. So looking on the screen now there is a photo that will show you how to measure the neckline of your garment. This is this can be a t-shirt as you can see here I've got a long sleeve top but you can use a t-shirt and we're going to measure the neckline of the garment. This doesn't matter if it's for a baby, a teenager or an adult it doesn't matter. You're going to measure that because importantly we want to be able to get over a head. Then you're going to look at the rhythm pattern and compare your measurement of your neck to the measurements that is on the written pattern. If you're using a different thickness of yarn or a different size crochet hook and we all have different tension you may need to make the first lot of chains or the first row a couple of times but once you know what size does what 
write it down and you can use that for other patterns like I said my sweater pattern and all that once we have completed row one you will be able to see if this is going to fit the size you need as it is the opening of the sweater you can compare this to the neck opening like I said and on the pattern you can see the black arrow ignore the red arrow because we don't need that until our next, next step it is very, very easy to adjust the armhole depth and if you look at the pattern that's the red arrow so if you have the neck size right then we're good to go so we want to measure the neck and write that down on the ribbon pattern and then we're also going to me measure our armhole depth if this is a really tight top on you then you want to add a little bit to it because you want something that's not really tight fitting but then you don't want something that's really bad otherwise your jumper's going to be way too small or way too big we're going to measure the length from the top to the bottom of the shirt and we're going to write that here that's not really that important if you can try it on as you go that's just a guide on how long you want to make the top so we're going to match up the neck measure with the info below in the ribbon pattern and we're going to make sure that that amount of chains matches up to the measurement that's on the pattern and that's going to make total sense when we get into the pattern so like I said, I will be making one for about a year, a one year old, 12 months. And my chain is, or my first row is going to be about 50 centimeters long because that is the average sort of size for, for a one year old up to about five years old. So you can use this same starting row for a one to about a five year old if you're using DK yarn. If you look at the ribbon pattern, that's going to make total sense to you. You can see all the sizes that you've got there. And you're thinking, how, the, how on earth can a one-year-old sweater fit a five-year-old sweater? Well, it's all to do with the armhole depth. I'm also going to put a link for you in the description box, and that will give you armhole depth measurements. It's a website that I use when I make my patterns, and um, it's going to have all the measurements there for you. And you're going to look at the one-year-old so for the one-year-old it's about 3.75 inches I'm not sure what that is in centimeters but then when you look at the five-year-old size then obviously it's a lot bigger so we just make more rows to make a longer armhole depth so to start our pattern we are going to start with a slip knot but what we want to do is leave about a four inch chain you can guess it if you like I'm just gonna guess that that's four inches it's just enough yarn to sew the very first row together because we do a little bit of cheating and don't join because I'm lazy and I can't be bothered figuring it out so we'll do it the easy way as I've heard someone say I think it might be Mikey from the crochet crowd fake it till you make it so for my pattern which is a one year old using DK or a number three or a eight ply yarn I'm going to make it for a one-year-old I need to chain 76 chains you may have a different number of chains that you need to make I know when I make one for myself I'm a Australian lady size 10 which I think is an American size 6 I use 88 chains I think it is let me just double check yeah 88 chains I'm just looking at the pattern 88 chains with a DK yarn which is this one if I make it with worsted weight yarn uh, I think I use 76 chains which is actually the same size I'm making now but it's smaller yarn so it's going to come out smaller so we're going to make our chains and like I said I am going to make 76 and you are going to make the amount that you need that is written on the written pattern so pause the video and I'll meet you when we have all of our chains done I have 76 chains and normally with a pattern you might join in the round and you've got to make sure it's not all twisted and and muck around I ain't got time for that so I'm just going to double crochet in the fifth chain from the hook we never count the the stitch that's on our crochet hook so one two three four and five we're going to double crochet into that and that chains that we've skipped counts as our first double crochet and a chain one I know it doesn't look like that but that's what it counts as <laughs> and then we are going to do a double crochet I am going to work into the next 10 stitches 
but if you're making a different size then you're going to look at the ones that you need to make and I forgot to say before you'll you'll notice where it says chains and you've got the first size and then you've got a whole heap of other numbers in brackets the size you're going to use so let's say you chose so I'm cho I chose 76 that is the fourth amount of numbers when we go along to the written instructions on row one and you can see that it says you've got to do double crochet into the next four and then there's a bracket six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen chains you're going to say if you're doing the third num the fourth number which is what I'm doing 76 chains you're going to go to the fourth number which is in where it says four six eight ten so the fourth number across is number ten so whatever number you picked out of the first lot of numbers where it says chain so many you're going to pick the same number that corresponds with that so if there's, if you chose the six number across you're going to do the six number across where it says to do so many double crochets and we're going to do that across the whole pattern so if you've never read a written pattern before and you're thinking why are there so many numbers <laughs> then that's why because you're only going to pick one of those numbers because it corresponds to the size that you're making it's instead of writing so this pattern does one two three four five six seven eight sizes so it's got one pattern instead of me writing out eight patterns which would take me like 12 months instead of a couple of days that's why it's written like that and you'll see a lot of patterns written like that if it's something that can be made in multiple sizes okay so stop chatting and so I need to double crochet into the next 10 but you may have a different amount of numbers but that's fine you just do what you need to do and I know I'll talk a lot in um, video tutorials but each video tutorial has to have all the information for someone that's maybe never made a project like this before so if you've made something like this before you're going I already know that will you stop talking but if you haven't, I don't want to miss any information out. Because this could be the first time that you've come across one of my patterns. And if I don't tell you all the information that you need, you're probably going to hate it. Because you'll be like, I don't know what I'm doing. This is too hard and you'll just won't watch the video tutorial. So I need to do the next ten. So you, do, you skip the first two, so that's a chain and then that one. You, you skip those, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Do a double crochet, chain one, and double crochet in the next chain. And that is our increase for this pattern. So in the next chain, we're going to do that. We're going to double crochet, chain one. Don't do your chain one too tight because it is going to be the space that we crochet into on the next row so we're going to do another double crochet in the very same stitch that we just did that previous double crochet and you can see there that we've got an increase because we've got two stitches and a chain one in the same space double crochet into the next 24 stitches which is for the size I'm making if you're making a different size then just crochet the amount that you need to crochet 24 I'm not going to film the whole 24 so pause the video and when you have your amount of stitches done I will meet you ready for the next part of the instructions pause the video and I'll see you there so I've just <laughs> apparently my phones are on silent <sighs> I just crocheted my 24 stitches our increase is there and I've done my 24 stitches and now it is time for another increase and do you remember what that was? it was the double crochet a chain one and a double crochet all in the same stitch going to double crochet and for me it's the next 10 stitches you may have a different number
and then we're going to work a double crochet chain one and double crochet for our increase into the next chain so all in that same chain chain one and double crochet double crochet into the next for me it's 24 and you may have a different number and what that should be if we've done our chain right it should be the remaining chains that we have on our first row that we did so we're going to double crochet all the way to the end we don't do an increase at the end because when we join it the stitches that we skipped at the beginning is our increase for that one there so double crochet all the way to the end and double check that you have the amount that you need I need 24 but you may need a different number pause the video and I'll meet you when we're ready to join so I'm up to the end and I need to have two more stitches and I don't apparently I cannot count to 76 I've only got 74 chains oh dear but I have this on tail here so I'm going to add in two more chains I haven't I don't do this very often but when I do, I'm glad that I left a long tail. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the chain, the last chain. We're going to add so we're only two more chains. So we're going to go pull up. So we're going to do one chain, two chain, and then we're going to go pull that through again. And that just becomes our new slip knot. So pull that. And I now have two more chains. <laughs> what was I saying before? Fake it till you make it. You are not gonna know. And I'm actually looking at that, I can't even tell myself. That's awesome. Go in there. So that was my 75th stitch chain, sorry. And that was my 76th chain. And now, I have the correct amount of double crochets that I need on this side. See, look, you can't even tell. I haven't done that for a long time. Normally I just rip it out and start again, but I wasn't going to this time. We now need to join this long thing into a circle so that we have the neckline of our jumper. And this is where we're going to measure against the ribbon pattern so I'm just going to scroll up on my ribbon pattern and mine needs to be about 50 centimeters and I'm crossing fingers and toes right now to make sure this is 50 centimeters and don't forget that the neckline will stretch so you can stretch it out a little bit so unstretched completely unstretched this is 42 centimeters long if I stretch it a little bit it will actually stretch out to 50 centimeters yay gold star for the lady talking on the video so now we are going to join this together you have no idea what it feels like when you <laughs> when you're going to measure something on screen hoping that it's going to be the measurement that you're telling everyone and then it really is the actual measurement and if it ever isn't the measurement you don't actually see it on the tutorial because I edit it out and start again we're now going to join to the third chain of the fourth the four chains that we skipped if you can't figure it out the easiest way to do it is go to the top we want this chain at the top here so this one right here that's our chain one for our chain one space so we want to join to the one that's next to that and that will actually be our third chain up so we've got let's see if I can point with my pointy stick this chain here so this is the double crochet that chain here is our chain for our chain one space and then this yellow one you've got here is the chain that we're going to make a slip stitch into and then we're going to pull that through what we want to do now is make sure that is not twisted if it's twisted now you will not be able to untwist on any other row because we've already joined it this is where we grab our stitch marker 
This is to remind us, I'm just going to pull this out. This is to remind us to double crochet into the top of the chain three when we come back around. This will be on every row. If you accidentally miss this stitch here, which is a slip stitch, if you pull it too tight, it disappears. If you accidentally miss that, as you go around, one of your sections, so this section here, which, what is the back, I think? I think it's the back, or the front. That will gradually get smaller, and your top of your project is going to look really weird and not fit you at all. So you just want to make sure... I mean, you could remember that easily, but if you're watching TV or something, not paying attention like I do, it's very easy to skip it. And you don't actually see it once you've skipped it. It's not like you can look back and go, oh no, I've skipped a stitch. It kind of disappears. So row two, we're going to slip stitch into the chain one space. And we are going to do a chain four. This counts as the very first stitch and a chain one space. If you do a alternative double crochet at the beginning of your rows, you're most welcome to use that now instead of the chain three. So you're going to do the chain three, which is our very first stitch, and that fourth chain, which is another chain, is our chain one. And we're going to double crochet into the chain one space. When we do that double crochet there, sometimes we double crochet over this very first stitch and that little stitch there disappears. You need to take note and make sure you double crochet in that first stitch. This will happen every time we do an increase, which is what we just did with the stitches in the chain one space. Sometimes you can double crochet over that. Just make sure that you've got that stitch. Again, if you don't, it will get smaller. Actually, it probably won't increase. I don't think it'll get smaller. It won't increase and one of your sides is going to be off. And that one you probably won't see either because you've actually crocheted over the stitch. So we're just crocheting across until we get to our next chain one space. If you can't see the chain one spaces, maybe use some stitch markers. So every time you do an increase, put a stitch marker in the chain one space that you just made. And when you get to it, it'll stand out more. Because sometimes it kind of does blend in a little bit. Yeah, see, I didn't even know that was there. It's actually just here. It does blend in, but you'll notice there's a bigger gap here than there is there. So if you had stitch markers handy, you can grab them and just place them like that after you've made them. So when you come along, you see it like that. So we're going to double crochet. And I'm going to show you what I meant by crocheting accidentally over that stitch. So we're going to do a double crochet and a chain one and a double crochet all in the same space. If you accidentally double crochet over that stitch, this is what it's going to look like. And you're going to think, if this is all the way over like that, you might think that your next stitch is this little pinky orange one there. And you're going to double crochet in there. And you can kind of see there that it doesn't really stand out that you've accidentally skipped. You've accidentally skipped that one because you've crocheted over the top of it. But if you pull this back across, now you can really tell that you haven't crocheted into it because there's this big gap in here. See how there's a big gap there and there, there isn't over here? That's because we've missed that stitch. So if you pull that out, just give it a gentle tug that way. And then put that back in. And what it is, is it's the second double crochet of our increase. Ooh, More thumbs. It's this stitch here that you've crocheted over. So you can put your stitch marker in there, 
and that reminds you where the chain one space is. I don't normally need them because I can feel it as I go along. Like I feel with these fingers that there's a chain one space there. I'm not saying I never do it because pff, let's face it, I'm human and that's it's not how I roll. I'm always making mistakes. So again, we're just going to double crochet across and I think this is where we've got lots of stitches. I think we're on like the back section and we are. We're going to double crochet all the way across until we get to our next chain one space pause video and I'll meet you there. When we get to the next chain one space, we are going to work a double crochet, a chain one and a double crochet. Oops. Crochet, chain one, and double crochet, and it's all into the chain one space. And then we're going to double crochet across, making sure we don't skip that very first stitch there. If you're using stitch markers in your chain one space, you want to place one into the chain one space there. I'll do that just so you can see what you need to do. As you get more rows, it'll start creating a shape rather than just a big blob of crochet. And the chain one spaces will start to stand out, stand out a lot more. Just give me two seconds. I'm just going to grab one. I've got another one that I'm working on. Way yarn ball. This is also Fiber Lily's yarn. This one's called Bella. It's very pretty. It reminds me of like vintage roses. I've got yarn balls falling everywhere. This is my other design with um, Kylie Shannon. So you can see there, this is how we're working. You can see there after a few rows, the, the, the increases stand out quite a lot. So you're definitely going to see them as you come along to them. Yeah, I love how this yarn is working up. So this is the exact pattern that we're working on now, this exact one. But then when we get to the bottom there, we're going to do something slightly different. So when that video is out, there will be a link pop up here and you can go and watch that one as well. It won't be out when you're watching this one when it's first released because as you can see, I haven't made it yet. <laughs> so we're going to double crochet across until we get to our next chain one space. So we're on the arm section here, so it's not as far as the other one. So I'll just keep the video going. There we go. So we're going to work a double crochet, chain one and double crochet. And that is oh, telling you what to do, but I'm not actually doing it. Chain one and double crochet all in that same chain one space from the previous row. You can see now that they're starting to stack up and they're a little bit easier to see. Don't forget, you want to make sure you grab that first stitch there. And we're going to crochet across and I think we're up to the last part now. Just make sure that's not twisted. Nope. Yeah, we are. And you're going to need to make sure it doesn't twist on this row when we join as well because it can actually twist there. Crochet all the way across and I'll meet you when we are ready to join. So I'm up to where we need to join and mine was actually twisted. Not when I joined the last row but this bit was like that. And if you pick that up where you're supposed to, it doesn't look twisted here. But it is. You can't untwist that. So you're going to make sure better if we lay it down. Make sure it is not twisted. It's not going to sit too flat but it'll sit flat enough so you know it's not twisted. And then pick that up. Okay, oh, so remember how I said we're going to forget to crochet into that stitch? I totally was because I was about to join it. We need to crochet into that stitch. So remove that stitch marker and crochet in that stitch. We're going to join to the top of the chain three, which is the beginning of the row. 
if you can't figure out where the third chain is, remember what I said, you go one chain from the stitch, which is the space, the chain space we need, and the next chain is the one we're going to join into. We're going to grab our stitch marker and we're going to mark that stitch. Today's video should be titled All About the Noises. I just sneezed, which we won't know because I would have edited it out. The microwave beeped, my phone went off, and now there's a plane. Can you hear the I don't know if you can hear the plane, but I can. <laughs> Into the next one. I do have my window open, that's why. Chain uh slip stitch into the chain one space. And then we're going to chain up three or an altern alternative double crochet. Do the chain. So that's four chains and then double crochet in the same space. This row that we're on now is row three and it's exactly the same as row two. We're going to double crochet in our double crochets. When we get to our chain one space, we're going to do our increase. If you can't remember, you can see it on the row below. It's a double crochet, chain one and double crochet, all into the same chain one space. We're going to double crochet across till we get to our next chain one space. Again, we're going to work out increase. And we repeat this all the way around. You will have four increases, even though I've only got three stitch markers there. I only marked the first two. You've got four increases and it will create that shape. So the middle bit obviously is where your head goes. And then this part will get gradually wider. So when you fold it down, at the moment it doesn't look like a jumper at all, but that's the shape it's going to create and then that's going to gradually get wider and that will create the top part of our jumper. I call it a jumper. Americans may call it a sweater or a sloppy joe. I think English may call it a pullover. Some people call it a jersey. <laughs> We're all different. Where do you, what do you call it where you come from? I call it a jumper. But I once said jumper and someone said, what's that? Is that a frog? And I'm like, no, it's something that you wear. How do you know? how far to go because now we're just going to repeat the previous row how do you know how far to go well you're going to go to that link that I, I told you about it is in the description box below the video tutorial and you can see what size you need to make or you're going to go with the measurement that you took off the t-shirt or the garment that you used to take your measurements and if you did what I said before you would have written it on the video you wouldn't have read it on the video tutorial, that's impossible. You would have wrote it on the written pattern or you would have wrote it down somewhere. So what you need to do is keep crocheting until, so I need to make mine 3.75 inches, but we're going to go a little bit smaller than our actual measurement because crochet stretches and the next row after we finish this bit is a the joining row where we create our armholes and it does add one row to the measurement. So this needs to be 3.75 so that's about there. I need to crochet until it's that long. Obviously I've got a lot more to go. But I'm only going to crochet until it is three inches long because one of my rows is about half an inch. So if I crochet until it's three inches, anybody want to volunteer to hang out my washing? Can you hear that beeping? It's ready. I'm going to crochet until my pit here is three inches because when I add my joining row, because my row is half an inch wide, it's actually going to make it three and a half inches with the joining row for my armhole depth. And then crochet stretches, so it's going to stretch enough to, to fit the 3.75 inches. So what you so to work out how much you need to make this, you need to measure how big your row is. Mine's double knit yarn, so it's a lot smaller than if I've used worsted weight. It's about half an inch. 
So I need to make this half an inch smaller than the armhole measurement that I need. I hope that makes sense. Because if you make this the armhole depth that you need, which is 3.75 for me, once I add on my joining round, it's going to make it 4 inches and that's going to be too big. It's okay if the child can grow into it, that's perfectly fine. It's going to be a little bit big when they first wear it, but they can grow into it a little bit. But if it's for an, ad an adult, which is not going to grow anymore, then you're not going to grow into it, are you really? <laughs> so you will need it to be the size that you took rather than a little bit bigger. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. I've got verbal diarrhea today. Pause the video and in the next part we will have our top part of our sweater done or the yoke and we will be ready to join. I have the top part of my jumper finished and this measures seven and a half centimeters or three inches. So don't forget when I add my, so it's three inches, and when I add my joining round, it's going to go to three and a half inches. So you're going to want it one row smaller than what you need your measurement. Don't forget it's going to stretch a little bit too, so you can adjust that. And we're now up to creating the armholes. At the moment, it's just this, I don't even know what shape you would even call that. It's not joined, there's no armholes, it's just a round thing. So to create our armholes, I've joined and I'm ready to start the new row, ready to start the new round. My stitch marker was just mar marking the very first stitch of the round that we need to remember to crochet into. I've removed all my other stitch markers. We're going to chain three. We're going to double crochet into the chain one space. Depending on what size you're making, if you're making a baby, a child, a teenager or an adult, will depend on how many chains we're about to do. If you're making a baby size, you want to chain three. If you're making a child size, you want to chain four. If you're making a teenager size, chain five. And if you're making an adult size, chain six. If you're making an adult's size, I would say large, I would chain seven and then anything bigger than that I would chain eight. What this does, it creates the space underneath the armhole that you need, like the side of your body sort of thing. It's going to create that space. So I'm making a baby, so I'm making three chains. going to skip the next section of double crochets so when we look at our work you can see there's a whole heap of double crochets across here and our increase is over there so we're going to double crochet into the next chain one space so skipping all these double crochets and crocheting into the next chain one space which is there And you've just created your armhole. If you just flip that back over, you can see we now have an armhole. Let's look at this. This is the front or the back section, and the next chain one space is over here. So you're going to double crochet all the way across and get until we get to the next chain one space, which is here. Don't forget, you want to make sure you grab that first stitch there and double crochet all the way across to the chain one space. Pause video and I'll meet you there. We're going to double crochet into the chain one space and we're going to do the same amount of chains that we did before. So for me it was three. If it was a child it was four, a teenager five, an adult six. If you're making the large size it was a seven and then if you're making any larger size than that I would suggest eight whatever you did on the previous armhole we're going to skip all these double crochets and find the next chain one space which for me is just there and we're going to double crochet into 
that chain one space. If you've made any of my other sweaters or cardigans or anything, I think this is slightly different under the armhole, but it's the same result. We are now going to crochet, double crochet all the way across, and then when we get to the end, it's going to be ready to join. So I'll meet you when we're over there, so just double crochet all the way across. Pause the video, and I'll meet you when we are ready to join. When we get to the end, this stitch marker was marking that stitch what we didn't want to forget about, but it, it's not there anymore, so I can remove that stitch marker because our chain three is here. It's starting in a different spot now. So we're going to join into the top of that chain three. We're going to chain three. And again, if you've got an alternative double crochet, you're allowed to do that if you want to. And now we have an armhole. You can see there, we've created an armhole. And on the other side. So we've done our chain three, and now we want to double crochet in each stitch and chain around on this round. If you want to work into each chain, you can. I did do that with the other version that I showed you, the pinky colored one. Or you could just crochet around the chain. It's whatever you find easier. I think on most of my video tutorials, I've just crocheted around the chain because it's quicker. So you would just go into the big space here, like the armhole space with your crochet hook, and then work the same amount of stitches that you made chain. So I made three, so I need to do three double crochet into that big space there. Or you can work into the chain, which I think I'm going to do again on this one because it did look a little bit neater. You, I'm sure you can't really tell it once you're wearing it, but I just like the way it looked. So you're just working into the chain like you would normally. And that way I think it spaces the crochets out better rather than them all sort of just clumped together. Like I said, it's probably not going to notice once you're wearing it and once we add the armhole and everything like that, so. Kookaburras. They're close to the house somewhere, but I'm not sure where. Normally, they sit in a tree right outside our bedroom window. And for a while there, they were doing that at 5 a.m. I don't get up at 5 a.m. for no one. <laughs> Unless I'm catching a plane, which isn't that often. So we're going to double crochet around. When you get to the other armhole, work at the same as that first one, and I'll meet you when we are ready to join. We are back around, and we're ready to join. We're going to join to the top of the chain three, or the f top of the first stitch. Oops. Now what we want to do is repeat the last round. We're going to repeat this, if you're doing a baby size like I am, you're going to repeat it for one inch. If you're making a child size, you're going to make it for one and a half inches. A teenager size, two inches, and an adult size, three inches from the armhole. Or, if it's the adult size, it'll be three inches from the bottom of your bust. The reason that we do that is... On a child one, it's probably not going to make any difference because on the smaller sizes, you don't need to worry about the bust area. But on an adult size one, if we start adding the pattern straight away, the pattern is going to be added straight across 
like the the middle of your bust going across and it doesn't look very nice it kind of draws attention to that area and it just looks a bit strange it's, I've had people comment on a jumper that I've got and these are designers not just random people walking past <laughs> and I and I did change color on that on this row and like mid bust I actually changed color the row before I think and someone said to me, you know, quite a few people have said, you know, when you're changing colour, don't make it sort of right in the middle of your bust line. Because it looks a bit strange. If you want to do that, you can start the shell pattern now. But if if you don't want it, if it's an adult size and you don't want it to be, yeah, right on that bust line. I'll, I'll see if I can remember to insert the photo of the, of the garment that I'm talking about. I don't know if I've got one under me me wearing it, but you'll see it if it, if I can find the photo. So, like I said, you can start it now if it's for a child, um, but if it's for an adult, I would just crochet a bit more so that it's not in that certain spot. So, like I said, we're going to do an inch from the armhole. So you're going to measure from this little bit here. That's already like half an inch. So you're going to measure. like that so I've already got about half an inch so for the baby one I need to do an inch so really I only have to do another round but that's all in the written pattern if you cannot remember what I'm talking about it is all in the written pattern and again the link for that will be in the description box so we're just going to repeat the last round and it was a chain three or your alter alternative double crochet and now we're just going to double crochet in each stitch around. We don't have to worry about crocheting into any chains because we've already done that on the previous round. And you can see that down there. We're just going to double crochet all the way around and I'll meet you when we are ready to join. I can hear a squawking sound. Generally, that means it's black cockatoos. Which are very hard to get on camera. I think they might be too far away. I cannot see any, but I can definitely hear them. They don't squawk as much as the white ones that we get flying over. Just trying to spot them. They just blend in so well down here, it's crazy. Once you spot them, you'll know where they are. Oh, there's little tiny ants. I haven't got any shoes on. Tiny ants on the ground and they keep biting me. Oh, it's glass. I thought it was black cockatoo. Oh, that sun is like right there. Where did that other one move? It's over there. Is it glass? Oh, I can't tell. Too far away, I'll be able to tell you when it's on the screen on my computer. Following them, because they've just flown into another tree. I hope they don't fly away. I still can't tell from where I'm standing what they are. They could be gang gangs. We keep getting them around here too. They just go inside. Where are they? There they are. I do put bird seed out, which I'll show you. Put the bird seed out just on the grass and just down, just down there. 
bed seed and just on the grass area here. So they may land. You can see they're so well camouflaged in the trees. I just realised it could be Gary. I can't see far enough. Oh no, he's on the rosellas, I may scare him off. Yeah, I can't see on my camera. I'll be able to tell on the computer more. But Gary is, is a bird that we nicknamed. He's a gang gang. And if I can, I'll put some footage on the screen now of what he is. So I've drawn my round and it's just a slip stitch to the top of the chain through. And that should give me one inch from the armhole or about one inch. Yep. That's pretty good, so that's me done. You will have a different measurement if you're making a different size. You will need to have the last round that you did and the amount of stitches that you have need to be divisible or dividable by two. Mine are. We start with an even amount of numbers when we increase and that makes it in Yeah, it should be an even amount of numbers. If for some reason you've missed a stitch or added a stitch somewhere, it doesn't matter. But just make sure that your last round is an even amount of, of stitches you could if you need to add one or take one i'll probably add one just do two stitches in the last stitch before you join the round that we just did for our pattern and we're going to repeat this throughout the length of the garment we are going to chain three sorry chain four and double crochet in the same stitch We're going to skip a stitch into the next one we're going to work a double crochet a chain one and a double crochet so this is the increase that we've been working throughout our pattern we're going to skip a stitch into the next one we're going to work a double crochet a chain one and a double crochet again skip a stitch in the next one double crochet Oops. chain one and double crochet we're going to work this all the way around and I'll meet you when we are ready to join so at the end of our round and we're going to join to the third chain just like what we did when we we're doing our increasing for our top part if you do not want this to be flary you can continue on with one double crochet, chain one, and one double crochet. But I am going to be adding two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, and that will give a bit more space and make the project flare out a little bit. Completely up to you what you want to do. What we're going to do now is slip stitch to the chain one space. For our next round, we're going to chain three, double crochet, in the same space chain one and two double crochet in that same chain one space you can see along here we now have chain one spaces which are in between the two double crochets that we did so we're going to skip this bit and only work into the chain one spaces. I'm going to do two double crochet, chain one, and two double crochet. Skipping over these stitches into the chain one space, two double crochet, chain one, and two double crochet. Again, skipping over these stitches in the chain one space, two double crochet, chain one, and two double crochet. And that's the repeat for this round. So the chain one space disappears, but it's very easy to find. So repeat this around and pause the video and I'm going to meet you when we are ready to join. When we get to the end of the row, we are going to join into the top of the chain three. So 
And for this pattern we need to slip stitch across to the chain 1 space so that we are in the correct starting position. We're going to chain 3, double crochet into the same chain 1 space, chain 1, two double crochets back into the same chain 1 space. And again on this row we're only going to be working into our chain 1 spaces but we are going to skip a couple of more stitches than we did on the previous round. So into your chain 1 space, which is here, we're going to work 2 double crochet, chain 1 and 2 double crochet all in the same chain 1 space. Again, next chain one space. So if you look at it, you're actually skipping four stitches. One, two, three, four. And the next chain one space is there. Two double crochet, chain one, and two double crochet all in that same space. And we're going to repeat this all the way around. When we come back around we are going to join into the top of the chain three and we're just going to repeat the round that we just completed. So you'll slip stitch across to the chain one space and then start this round that we're doing. We're going to repeat that for the length that you want your project. Apparently my phone is still not on silent. <laughs> and you can make this the length that you want. You could turn this into a dress but I am just going to have this as as a little jumper size or a tunic size and I'll put the measurements that we've got when I've finished this and you can see how big it is. So pause the video and next part of the video will be when I've finished the shell part of the jumper. I have completed the rows on my gorgeous little jumper and I have this much left and this is from one ball and I'm going to be using this for the edging around the arms and around the neck. Altogether, I have about 7 grams. Just double check. Now it's zero. <laughs> about 7 grams of yarn left, and that hopefully will be enough for the edging. If not, I do have another ball, so I'm not too worried. The garment so far weighs ooh, reflection, 101 grams. So, altogether, Got approximately 107 grams of yarn. For the bottom I'm not going to do any edging because I think this is um, just lovely how it is. You are going to need to sew in that end and we're going to go to the top of the jumper. We have the end that we need to sew in so we can do that now. I want to sew it into the chain here. want to find somewhere to anchor that so that it doesn't look like we joined it. Can't even tell we joined it can you? That was a pretty good joining there if I do say so myself. So through that loop and then turn it to the back and then we can sew in our ends. I'm going to skip the last loop that it just came out of and then go back again. So that's that sewn in and we want to grab our yarn and now we're just going to work the edging. I'm just going to join it in the same place or roughly the same place. When we work our edging, we're going to work between the vertical 
bars there those little I'm going to work into the middle of that stitch if you've made any of my cardigans or jumpers then you would have already known how to do this because this is the method we use on that one and we're going to single crochet all the way around we're going to go in the same stitch and make a single crochet and then single crochet in each stitch if we go into here it's going to pull up a big hole if we go into the two vertical stitches we have there in between them it creates a nice edge I'm going to work this all the way across until we get to the increase section which is over here so continue on until we get to the increase here when we get to the increase you've got the two stitches one there one there and we're just going to do a single crochet decrease so we're going to go into the first one, pull up a stitch, into the second one there, and pull up a stitch, pull up a loop. What am I saying? Pull up a stitch, pull up a loop. Got three loops, and then yarn over and pull through all three. And we're going to do this every time we get to the increase. So we're going to do another one there. So just single crochet across until we get to the next one, and I'll show you how to do it again. Go in there, pull up a loop. Go into the next one. Yep, that's all right. Let's pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And we're going to repeat this all the way around. All together, we'll have uh, four decrease sections because we've got four increase sections on the top section. So yeah, that's a lot of sections. Pause the video, and I'll see you in just a minute. When we get to the end, we're going to join to the very first single crochet. And then pull through a loop, cut off our yarn, pull through, and we can sew that end in as well. I'm going to do that off camera because you've you know how to sew ends in. We're now going to go to the armhole and we're going to work a round of single crochet around the armhole. If you wanted to add the shell pattern to the sleeves and make it a longer sleeve one. Remember how we had to make sure we had an even amount of numbers before we started the shell? You're going to make sure you've got that. Join your yarn anywhere down the bottom here. And I'm going to go between the vertical bars as well. And we're going to single crochet in the same stitch. single crochet around the opening this is pretty easy because we are just single crocheting into stitches it's just down the bottom there that it gets a little bit fiddly but work your way around and I'll meet you when we're ready to join so I'm coming around this is where I started the row and I just thought I'd show you what I'm doing here because it's a little bit tricky it's not easy to see what you need to do I'm gonna go into the top there so what's that that's that's the chain of the increase at the top of the jumper so I'm gonna crochet in there I think that was the chain one that we just crochet into and then you can see here there's not really a stitch to go into so just put it where you think you need to put a stitch going into the vertical bars there and that one and then join and oops, I've gone into the second stitch, joining into the first single crochet. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm shaking my hook. It kind of like goes through a little bit easier. When your stitches are a bit smaller, it helps. Cutting our yarn off. I'm playing yarn chicken, by the way. So I'm running out of yarn pretty quick. 
got to try and get the other sleeve out of that. <laughs> I think I'll make it. But yeah, we'll see. So then uh, do exactly what we did on this sleeve onto the other sleeve. Well, I won at Yarn Chicken, so I'm very happy about that. There's probably enough to make a little flower or something left there, so that's really good. And here is my little jumper. Oh my goodness. This... <laughs> Apparently my phone's not on silent. Oh, that's so funny. Here is my finished little jumper. It is so cute. I'm calling it a jumper, but it doesn't have long sleeves, so I don't know what that makes it now. But this could go over leggings or a onesie or something like that. I think that would be so cute. If you're making the adult size, you could definitely make it to wear with a singlet top underneath or a tank top, a pair of jeans. Yeah, get creative. So let me know in the comment box what yarn you have used and what size you have made. I would really love to know. Thanks for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Give it the thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy crochet. Lamita. I actually have...